Welcome to the Where Do Gays Retire podcast, where we help you in the LGBTQ plus community find a safe and affordable retirement place. Join Mark Goldstein as he interviews others who live in gay-friendly places around the globe. Learn about the climate, cost of living, healthcare, crime and safety, and more. Now, here's your host, Mark Goldstein. Today, we take you to Austin, Texas, with our guest, Andrew Rudin. And I'll tell you a little bit about Andrew. Andrew was born and raised in the suburbs of Jacksonville, Florida. He moved to Tallahassee in 1998 to attend Florida State University and graduated with a degree in international relations and geography. Soon after, he landed a job creating maps for the state of Florida's geological survey to help protect the state's aquifers. In 2003, after five years in quaint Tallahassee, Andrew was invited on a random trip to Austin, Texas. One year later, he decided to pack what he could into his car and move there. 18 years later, he still lives there, working in the field of geography as a data architect for the city of Austin. Sounds impressive. Since 2004, he's seen the city go through many growth spurts to become the place it is today. When he's not toiling away in front of a computer or giving cuddles to his Italian greyhound, Felix, Andrew enjoys venturing downtown to Austin's nightlife, day trips, and to the Texas Hill Country and finding excuses to travel abroad. With that, I welcome you, Andrew. And uh, before we get started, I'll say a few words about Austin. A little quick facts. Austin is the state capital of Texas an inland city bordering the Hill Country region. Home to the University of Texas flagship campus, Austin is known for its eclectic live music scene centered around country, blues, and rock. Its many parks and lakes are popular for hiking, biking, swimming, and boating. South of the city, Formula One circuit of the America's Raceway has hosted the United States Grand Prix. All right, Andrew, so... Welcome again, and tell the audience your story. Like you, you came on a vacation to Austin, and then what was it? A year later, you came back. Yeah, yeah. So I was just living in Austin, living in Tallahassee, and I had a friend there who used to live in Austin many years ago, and he decided to take a road trip back to visit, and just decided to invite me along, and I was like, okay, sure. And so we took a road trip. It takes about a day to get over here. And I spent a week traveling around, going to going to the gay bars downtown. It's a very lively downtown here compared to Tallahassee and Jacksonville, where I the cities I knew, and got to see this really eclectic city. is filled with it's a mix of there is a lot of the government workers here. There's for the state government being capital. There's kind of a, a still it is Texas, so there's kind of the cowboy kind of vibe. There's hippies that moved here in the 60s. That is kind of where the live music theme came from. And then also there's this kind of tech boom too. So at the time, Dell had Dell and these other big IT companies had started to move in the 90s. And so it's just all these kind of people living together. There's so much nature, natural beauty kind of around, even in the downtown area with the lake running through downtown and the lake, the big lakes out west, people running on the trails. There's a huge trail network all around downtown on the river. And so it's just a very active city. And this great mix of the kind of nature baked into the actual like downtown proper city. And yeah. So, so I came back and I was already kind of thinking about moving away uh, from Tallahassee to one of the bigger cities, usually around there. You think of Orlando or Miami or Atlanta, but I just decided I, I liked Austin because it was kind of this medium sized city. It was further out kind of to the West where I really hadn't been a whole lot. And so I just kind of decided to take a gamble and quit my job with the state in Florida and kind of figure out what I was going to do here in Austin. I had a couple of months of savings, moved out here. I had a friend who was just looking for roommates in his house that he just bought in Austin. And so I stayed with him. And a couple of months later, I landed a job with Dell doing some kind of like back office of data management work. And then I landed a job with the state at the Texas Department of Transportation. And then I was 
sort of in the door living here in Austin and moved around to a consulting firm. And then I ended up landing at the city of Austin in 2007, helping in the, so I work in the called, it's, the industry is called geographic information systems. It's kind of just doing map making on computers is the way I to simplify it. <laughs> but I work for the city's watershed department, a watershed protection department. And now I work in the IT department, helping to kind of manage all the mapping software across the city. So. Wow. You sound like Mr. Google Maps. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like Google Maps. All the data on Google Maps kind of comes from yeah. people in my field. So usually, so yeah. But that was kind of how the move happened. It was really just kind of a um, a really fun trip. And I know a lot of people, a lot of other people that I know from that time, like in the 2000s, there's a lot of people who did that. They kind of came to Austin randomly for a trip or for a conference or something like that. And they fell in love decided, with it. They fell in love with it and decided, well, I'm going to go back. And I think it's just the mix of cost of living, the fact that it's like a medium sized city, and a liberal the fact city. That, the fact that it's got, yeah, it's a, it is a liberal city in the middle of a very Republican state. Right, red state. Uh, so, so yeah, that kind of com- combination made it makes it attractive to a lot of people. And we've been on the like best cities to live in for since I've lived here. I think this year it finally we dropped off the top ten in this in the country to like thirteen because of the housing. I think the cost of housing cost of living. Kind of has knocked us out of the top ten, but. Um, gotcha. I've been on that list for a long time. Yeah, it's yeah, it's a great city. It's pretty self-sufficient. It has everything, and we'll get into that. So that one vacation, you who knew that you'd be here for be in Austin for eighteen years? Yeah, that's a long time. Where is Austin located within Texas? Okay, Texas is real big. It's- it is very big. It takes, I think it takes something like 16 hours to drive across the whole thing. I've never done that, but it does. I, okay. So it's, I say like it's six, five or six hours from the Louisiana border on the east side. And, but then it's about 10 hours for eight hours from El Paso on the other side where New Mexico is. So, so it's literally called Central Texas. So the area around Austin is called Central Texas. It's more or less in the middle. It's a little east of the middle, but it's this kind of, transition so i say austin is in this kind of transition zone where you kind of go from the great plains of dallas and houston are more like kind of flat plains and houston's more like louisiana swamps and things like that but as you go drive towards austin it sort of transition to more farmland and then austin's like you said it's on the dividing line of the texas hill country so on the west side of austin is where the hills start and it gets more rocky we have hills that are like in the 500 600 I don't think I think the tallest hill we've got here is like in a thousand feet. But then there's this transition to the hill country, what's called the Edwards Plateau. And then on the other side of the Edwards Plateau, if you drive about two or three hours west of Austin, you will get to kind of where it starts to become mesas and start to look like the Texas that everybody thinks. Like right. when my brother came to visit, he's like, I t- this does not look like. Like where's the cowboy? Did. Where are yeah, the cowboys? Yeah, where are the cowboys? Where are these big mesas? Why is all expecting all this dirt and all this stuff? <laughs> and it's not. It's There's a lot of springs. So the hills, that's why this area got settled so long ago, is that this the springs are coming. <laughs> the water is in the aquifers here in central Texas. Water will come out of the hills and kind of percolate out into the springs. And so Austin has natural springs. You can swim in them here. San Antonio has natural springs. The city in San Marcos in between us. That they all have these kind of springs, and that's where the first settlers and natives kind of kind of grew. So that's how I describe it. I mean, again, in terms of like in proximity to other cities, it's about I think it's like three hours to Dallas on I-35 to the north. Houston is about two and a half hours to the southeast and then san antonio is only about an hour and a half away i find it fascinating like how does a city such as austin become like a little blue bubble in the middle of a red state like how does that happen yeah i'm I'm not exactly sure i think part of it I don't know how it was before. I think I've heard two kind of stories on this. I don't really know the real story. But one of that, one of them was that I think just um, before it was this kind of before the '80s, it, the city of Austin was really like a kind of a sleepy town. It was like the state capital, and it was the home to the University of Texas, and that was really. It. And then, but then in the '60s, there was a lot of hippies that moved into Austin. It became, and that's where kind of like the live music scene came, and they 
I don't know, it kind of grew and became a thing here in Austin. And I think that's where like Keep Austin Weird came from. There's this phrase, Keep Austin Weird. Yeah. There's, and yeah, this kind of like all the kind of like, there's this guy who still drives, rides his horse down one of the streets in downtown. And I see people walking like their miniature ponies and like <laughs> cycles and stuff. Pretty fun. So, so there's always like kind of things like that going on, the kind of quirky things. But I've heard that that, that was maybe where that started. And why Austin may be more liberal than other places. Some other, one of my other friends, he, I think he knew some of the Austin history. He said something about, I think the group that settled in Austin, there was a group of like, just a lot of German and Czech heritage here from the first settlers who came through. And I think there was something about that where they, that group that kind of settled in this area was just more liberal leaning. I'm totally, I'm, I, this, some yeah, story, that's fine. Uh, but that that may be part of it as well. But I think it's more just the that that vibe from the '60s. I think kind of late role. But Dallas is also Dallas. Dallas is kind of a score as well too. Like I, th- I think of like the, the LGBT like city scores. So Dallas also scores pretty high, and mm. Houston Houston's too. kind of up there too. And San Antonio's kind of up there. I think Houston. And, that's just based on the local laws and things like that. But do you think they keep Austin weird? Uh, well, they have been. Although uh, I would say it's getting a little eroded. It feels like it's certainly getting eroded by all the IT that's kind of come in, or all the influx of people. I would say like everybody in Austin. Austin's been in, in, being flooded with people moving from other parts of the country since the, really the '90s <laughs> when Dell really grew and all the IT started coming in and there's a different wave after wave of people coming in. I'm in the 2004 wave. So it, it feels like it has eroded us. I say that I, sometimes I see a lot of our older, like, like the kind of, I don't know, quote unquote hole in the wall restaurants are that we all kind of love from back then are, are gone and they're getting replaced by very nice restaurants. And I have lots of friends who love the really nice restaurants, nice restaurant. but some of those places that I remember first going to when I moved to Austin, uh, like the old play, hamburger place called Hutt's Hamburger. <laughs> yeah. it's it's, uh, it's still in the airport, but the actual like lot, location downtown is, is gone, and now it's, it's, gone. You know, it's a, a high rise. So, but yeah, I think there certainly is still some of that around, especially in the downtown, the areas, of neighborhoods close to downtown that have that's really like the, when people come to Austin and see the vibe. It's like South Congress and South Lamar and East Austin are these kind of neighborhoods that are adjacent to downtown. Where a lot of that that keep Austin weird kind of vibe sticks around. Yeah, I, you, sorry about that. Oh, the, yeah, go ahead. The only thing I've never been to Austin. The only times I've seen it, it was on TV for Queer Eye. And oh, okay, yeah, yeah, and that was kind of interesting. Yeah, they were definitely in the yeah those the, in the some of the like, weird. But yeah, they were filming in all those like really cool <clears throat> neighborhoods that we yeah. have. Yeah. Tell us about uh, tell us about the climate. Are the summers very hot and humid? Are the winters, what are the winters yeah, like? Yeah, I would say, yeah, so the summers tend to get a little hot here. <laughs> it gets up to, I think the average is supposed to be a higher 90s, but it feels like we have these kind of long stints where we have 30 days or something where there's no clouds. It's up in the upper 90s or in the lower 100s. And there's really not like a break, especially like in August. Is it humid? It's kind of middle of the road. I would say it's not Florida humid. It is not Florida, which I <laughs> yeah, I was sort of used to. So I guess it wasn't too bad for me. I do feel it when I go to Houston or something. Houston feels to me like Florida, but Austin has it, it's not doesn't feel as humid. Sometimes we'll get the wind the winds will sort of shift and we'll get the Gulf winds from like Houston and then we get the big cumulus clouds and the afternoon thunderstorms and stuff like that. But that's kind of rare. It's usually we kind of get the dry winds off the northern plains and it will be in the, in the summertime it will be pretty hot and like in the 90s every day in the evenings it'll get down to like 70 degrees or low, upper 60s or something oh, like that's that. not bad so it's nights are nice yeah and so it's it's not the worst <laughs> the worst kind of summer i guess we have had some summers that have been a little brutal and getting up to like 110 and things like that but on average it's sort of lower yeah. 100s how the, about winters and then the winters are pretty mild last year was an exception but in the normally the sum, the winters i would say like in january the low is like in the four like around 40 or something like that and then the high is oh i want to say like 50 
50 or 60 or something like that. During then, the day, you mean? Yeah, 50s? yeah. during the day, a high will get up to like 50 or That's pretty good. Like, maybe 60 if it's going to get higher in, in January. But we will have cold fronts and we do have like sort of ice. Normally, we just have around every other year, we'll have like an ice storm that comes through. So this front will come through in January, February. It'll bring bring the temperature down below freezing and then it will rain and then that will freeze on the ground, and then the city kind of shuts down for a day. And uh, now last year, we had the big snowstorm in the whole state of Texas. That was different. We had five days of heavy snow on the in- ground. Interesting. In Austin? In Austin, yes. we had. It was. I think the whole state basically was kind of out for five days. So we, wow. were, we hovered at my house. I don't know. We hovered around, I think, about 15 degrees, 10 degrees to 15 degrees degree high of 15 degrees during the day we did not go above freezing at all for five days and so oh wow there's a lot of power outages and things like that for a lot of people there was um uh and then we had water problems after that so it was pretty serious storm yeah so if you could read about like winter in texas i mean that was a big story last year that's a big deal yeah yeah but it it was i think the last thing yeah, I think that was the last time something close to that had happened was about 50 years ago. Yeah, so. I would think that. Yeah, it's like snow if it ever snows in Phoenix. Yeah. And it has, <laughs> actually. I think I was here, it was last year or the year before. I, I'm looking out on my terrace and I see something hitting my terrace. I was like, what is that? And it was actually hailing. So. Yeah. Yeah. Normally we have, like, we'll get every, we'll get like a dust of snow every. Five, I mean, I feel like over the 18 years I've been here, it has snowed like a sprinkle a couple times, and then we'll have an ice storm every other year. And that is usually gone. We all stay home for a snow day, and we're back. back. <laughs> Everything melts the next day, and we're it's back to normal. So I'm not sure how much that the trend of last year will continue. But. Do you have a rainy season, too? We have two rainy seasons. So fall and, and spring are the sort of rainy season. We And we're, okay, so I guess I don't, make it sound too bad but we are known as like flash flood alley and so we will have these kind of storms that come through those like those fronts that bring in the ice storms we have these storms that come down off the plains and then they will drop 10 and i don't know five inches 10 inches of water very quickly wow. and in the hill country in, in the hills to the west of town they will create these pretty you'll see sometimes you'll see these kind of swells of like the creeks around downtown or in West Austin, but those will dissipate after a couple hours or so. So I could say, well, look at your floodplain. <laughs> so <when> you're buying. <laughs> yeah. So all right, you have to know if you're uh, in a flood zone. Yes, so that's important. There's and there's like hail and stuff that we have that when those storms come through, they will drop hail. Austin's known for having some hail storms, so they come along with those storms. But those will be the two rainy seasons. Is there any place to escape in the summer? Like if you're in the summer heat, is there any place that you could travel to within a couple of hours to get away maybe um, somewhere? Not, I would say uh, not, not a couple hours if you're just driving. I'd say, I mean, the hill country, because it is a little higher, it's like slightly cooler, but in the summertime... Not so 100 much. degrees versus 95 degrees. It's not much. It's not going to be a difference. I'd also say Dallas too. I looked at Dallas and Dallas is the same sort of temperature in, in the summertime. They get cooler in the wintertime. They get more freezes, but in the summertime, they're just as hot as we are. So it's just interesting. But I think some people do, if you are willing to drive to New Mexico, I do hear some people will drive out to the mountains in New Mexico oh, to nice. get some relief or Santa Fe or something. And we have direct yeah. flights there. I would say if you want relief from the heat, because Texas is so big, you do kind of have to just kind of fly somewhere else yeah texas is huge okay so how important is living in an lgbtq community to you do you live in one or are there these communities in austin yeah i would say certainly do want to feel safe and be able to kind of live my own life and i would say we don't have, Alson is kind of known for that fact that we don't really have a gay residential neighborhood or, gay or neighborhood. neighborhood. So it's kind of spread out. So, so, and I think when you look at kind of the kind of, if you want to look at the kind of like political map of Austin and like how people vote, I mean, it is very distributed kind of, kind of liberal democratic voting is all kind of in the actual city proper and like some of those the suburbs so, as yeah. well. So it, so yeah, I know the gays that I know are 
spread out evenly sort of throughout the city. My neighborhood, I was like, I bought kind of in a new build in 2015. And uh, I was in the first phase and unbeknownst to me, a couple of years later, the gays decided that they really liked our neighborhood you brought and, the gays uh, you i guess it. so but uh, are the th- yeah so there's a we have a face group for our the gay gay community in our just in our residential neighborhood oh that's great and they do driveway hangs and we have they we've got had a we've had a couple pride events just at our community center do you have flags um, like rainbow flags well, hanging anywhere you, well we're allowed i guess we have an hsa no so they say during the month of june we're allowed to put our flags up so there's that but i think you can put them up in your windows or something they just say don't hang them outside right. that's hoa rules and but so yeah we've had pride events and we had this year we had a drag queen at the community center for a couple of drag queens at the community center for our pride party in june so that's so um, cool so yeah, so that that's a feeling there, and I know for in terms of neighborhoods, though, I mean, I say like there's the kind of gay the, the bars, the gay bars are all kind of central centralized on an area downtown, on a block, and there are a lot of condos around there now or apartments, and so a lot of, of gays do like to live downtown or they live in kind of the neighborhoods around there. But you don't have to. It's kind of accepting. Kind of it's everywhere. accepting everywhere. That's good. That's what everyone should be looking for. I mean, that's. Yeah, I want to be accepted. I don't want to have to be, if I go out in the suburbs too, I don't really want to be discriminated against. Yeah, I mean, I think when you get maybe out to like the outskirts of, so uh, Travis County, this is kind of getting the real estate thing, but like when you're in, Travis County is the main county for Austin proper. And then uh, Austin does spread into Williamson County to the north a little bit. And then you kind of get into all the suburbs up there. I would say kind of when you get further out into Williamson County, then right the dynamic shifts a little bit it gets to, a little to different, get yeah. to get different and then on the south side uh, hayes county kind of get the same thing so there's some neighborhoods down there but you and kyle are the kind of southern neighborhoods and san marcos is a big university town that's kind of halfway to san antonio and they are also kind of a a, a, a big blue area i think they have like one or two gay bars in their downtown i haven't been to them but it's a pretty pretty decent area as well and pretty friendly and from the university community so speaking of friendly is it easy to make friends in austin or are they in cliques or what's the oh yeah i don't know i think when i first moved to austin i thought it felt kind of clickish but i think it's the dynamic has totally changed since back then i feel like there's just this different vibe from all the there's a lot of it folks have kind of moved in from san francisco or seattle and things like that so, and there's always a lot of, also a lot of tourists coming through for all the events that are in Austin. So, but I think there are, I mean, if you're, you got to maybe reach out a little bit more than you, you would, but, but I would say there are certainly tons of events going on in, in town and the charities and groups like that are ways to certainly meet people. And that the gay bars are real, real friendly. And so I think it's possible and to meet people and you just have to well, get out there a little bit. Yeah. yeah. What's the population? Do you know? The city proper population is 1 million people. Okay. So the metro is like 2.5, I think, for the counties surrounding us. So it's a big city. A million yeah. people in the city is a, a lot of people. Yeah. yeah. I, and for all the cities that in Texas, really the only one that I want, I've already been to Houston, but the only one I really want to go to is Austin. So yeah, it's a that's still place. something. Yeah, and I, yeah. I say too. I mean, in terms of like the communities, well, I was looking up some stats and things that I didn't realize this, that there was a study last year where I think Austin was like number three in the country for percent of population that are that identify as gay. As gay. So uh, it was like a San Francisco, then it was Portland, Oregon, and then it was us at like five point something wow. percent. So you're like up there with Fort Lauderdale, I think. Yeah. Yeah, and this seems kind of weird. We don't have the gayborhood like those right. areas do. Like the Wilton Manors or... Yeah. yeah. And I wonder if it's just part of it is kind of people just kind of moving here for like work and stuff. Like I know like a lot of jobs have, a lot of offices have moved their headquarters to Austin recently. And that's what I think during the pandemic, people were, Austin was one of those cities that you could move to if you could work anywhere and yeah. uh, was cheap and that's also what really drove our real estate up the last year but yeah austin is definitely a place it's good it's on my bucket list so one of these days i will definitely get out there 
yeah. second event and come on. Up. Yes, you'll have to keep me informed. Too. So what's the local economy like? I know prices, real estate prices increased dramatically, probably like everywhere else over the past year. And I'm sure Austin is no different. But give us an idea, yeah. give the audience an idea about electric bills, real estate, both rental market and the purchasing yeah. purchasing a home. Okay, I'll do the, well, I'll kind of go over some of the utility stuff. I can yeah. grab some numbers. So in this, for the kind of city area around the city, I think the electric bill, so the average bills that I saw were about $100 a month for electricity, and the water bills were about $36, probably higher if you have like a bigger yard, but that was just the average for like all the customers at the water utility. About the $100 electric bill is an average of like the whole I year? I think that's just for, yeah, that's that, well, it's an average per month for, yeah, $100 per month kind of averaged out for the whole okay. year. And okay. I was able to pull, it kind of jived with my numbers. So I live in like a three bedroom house with a yard. And so my number, and I, it's just me in the house. So it was, my electric bill was like $75 on average the last year. Wow, uh, it kind of varies, very, varies between $50 on the low end and $130 on the high end for the summertime. We also, natural gas is, is very common, yeah. especially in homes, not necessarily apartments, but my gas bill is around $45 a month. And then my water, yeah, my water was about $40, $40 $50 a month. And then like trash was kind of like $15 or whatever. So wow. it's not bad. I kind of live, on, I do feel like I live on the cheaper side. I think, I think the system always tells me I'm on the low end. So I'm always on the high end here. I mean, yeah. I will never see a $50 electric bill ever. Yeah. And I'm in a condo. Yeah, I know some people who like if you have if you have a family of four or, or you have like a really big yard that you're watering and like my friend had a like, kind of a, like a whole garden in his backyard and so he was in the summertime like using two three hundred dollars of, yeah, of yeah. water so you totally can get up there but I kind of stick to the yeah hundred dollars is great. It's not bad. How yeah. about, okay, so you went yeah. water, electric, yeah. Yeah, and then ga gas for your car kind of goes, it's cheaper here in Texas in general. I think I was driving around today, I think it was like 340, 330, 340, so it's definitely. That's um, pretty cheap, yeah. And, and let's see, so I can get to so some tax things also, just so people know, the there is no state income tax, so that's a, right. kind of a that's big a plus. benefit for the state. Oh, you go from um, Florida to Texas. Yes. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, this is a good thing for me. And then the sales tax is about eight and a half, eight point two five percent. I think six percent is that's the state. The other rest is for local governments. And then the you know, kicker here, though, is property taxes are a little higher, and so people don't think about that when they look at it. But right, property taxes are about two. I just say I would say on average about two to three percent of the cost of the home every year. So I think in the city proper, like for the most parts of the city where like the, that the school district for the main school district for Austin and the county and the city itself, those taxes are about two, yeah, two, two percent exactly this year. Mine are a little higher. I live kind of just outside the city limits. And so it's a little different. Mine actually are a little higher because of the different tax regimes. So mine is like, I think 2.7 or something like that. So, so do just check that out when you look at it. But it, that kind of means like if for a $500,000 home, you would pay about $10,000 a year if it was like a 2%. So that's kind of rough right. math, but it totally varies by the neighborhood as you kind of look around Austin. So it, it, some people say that kind of cancels out the whole income tax. So you just have right. to kind of think about it that way, but it, it is not like you just drop the income tax and then it's like, Right. It's like you have to pay it somewhere. Yeah. It, it's the same thing when I was living in Florida too. No state tax, but you have to pay it somewhere. They get whatever, wherever they get you, they'll get you. But yeah. And my, I remember my property taxes in Florida were pretty high as well, but it makes sense. It all comes out in the wash. So, yeah. Okay. All right. Tell and us. So talk about ahead. home prices. Yeah. Okay. So and I think for the city of Austin, it's well for the whole Austin region, it's about four hundred and seventy thousand median sales price. I was trying to grab some numbers today. I think it, it all kind of peaked in the summertime, and then we've been dropping off because of the changes in the interest rates and this kind of stuff. So if you check, you certainly want to check the prices because it is changing dynamically here in Austin. But I think in the city of Austin proper, the average home price was about five hundred fifty-five thousand. Rent is 
1720 for like a one bedroom and then 2150 for a two bedroom if you get down i think like people like me they came to austin and like i want to live downtown it's so cool and my real kind of laughed at me and, <laughs> and we said so like right now on uh, a downtown a condo downtown would be 935k and That's i think rent downtown penny. is th- 30 like in the three low 3000s that's starting for one like a one bedroom and goes up from there the neighborhoods around owner are going for yeah like 800 i mean it's like 800 for like uh the Hyde Park area or south of the river in 78704 zip code is like a really hip zip code. People put that on their bumper sticker of their car that they live in 78704. So that one is like, I think I saw 1.4 million. That seemed really high, but 516,000 for like a condo down there. And then rents of like right around 2000. So, and then you get out to the suburbs like San Marcos or Buda. I mean, they're still like in the 400s for a single family home. And then rents were like, yeah, 1500. Everything is like above 1500, even in these kind of suburbs. So how big is the downtown? Is it big? It's, it's pretty big. I would, well, I would say like relative to bigger cities, Austin is very compact and kind of built up, but I think the downtown is, yeah, it's only like a couple, it's only like Blocks. two, three miles oh, across or yeah. something like that. Yeah. It's not bad. Yeah, if you look at this map of Austin, there's I-35 is the main interstate that kind of boundaries the east side of downtown. And then Mopac Expressway is the other highway on the west side of downtown. And really, like, I guess there's a dividing line. There's some suburbs, kind of residential areas that aren't really considered downtown. On the west side there, before you get to Mopac, maybe Lamar is Lamar Boulevard is probably the kind of actual boundary of what people consider downtown where the high rises really start. But yeah, there's I mean, there's just cranes. I mean, still today, there's still building five six cranes for all these buildings close to downtown that i see all the time <laughs> so, yeah yeah that's because it's a place that everybody wants to be so they're only really building but that's a good thing too so how about the arts and culture scene can you describe that yeah so we do have a very active scene here i mean we have just in terms of like kind of i go through kind of the classical stuff first but we have do have a symphony here the austin symphony the university of texas has a school of music and they put on concerts and things and they have an opera and they have a big concert hall on the on campus and they actually that's where all the kind of traveling broadway shows will will set up okay. usually the austin symphony also built like a whole new pavilion about 10 years ago that's like really nice and i think they do some shows in there we also have for theater there's the zach scott theater puts on shows they just kind of rebuilt their whole theater building like maybe five ten years ago and that's a really nice place they do kind of a mix of sometimes they'll put on the, like kind of local presentations of musicals or traditional plays and i'm trying to think here too we have a gay men's chorus here as well and then besides that you mentioned just in general this is a lot of live music here and what that kind of means is when you're going downtown you kind of go when you go to bars there'll be it's like everything. anything mix of between a guy kind of in a, with a guitar or like a small band playing to we have a lot of shows that come through like i guess like smaller acts that are coming through is there a lot of country music there's yeah there's country music there's yeah and there's like blues and there's like a jazz club is kind of cool downtown i'm in like a basement but we have a lot of like pop stuff or alternative stuff that comes through just kind of a mix and and we have we're getting bigger venues now so we have if you ever watch on pbs they have austin city limits music festivals okay where they kind of do these uh, they air these shows those are filmed in one of the buildings downtown in austin it's right a block away from the gay bars so i've seen like cindy lopper there and also, I've seen uh, Trixie and Katya's like kind of drag, uh, the drag uh, duo. They did a show there, so uh, lots of stuff going on there. And we just got two new, big, uh, even bigger event centers for big concerts that just opened up this year as well. So that's kind of like the music scene. It sounds it, like you have a lot there. Yeah, I, mean, I see. We don't get like the big you artists. Won't be like, bored. Like, yeah, so I mean, we don't get like the big artists like Beyonce. Right. Only does like Houston or Dallas or something like that. But but yeah, it's I think Pink Pink was here last week for we had the so getting into festivals too. So we also have two music festivals. We have the South by Southwest music festival in around March, around spring break. That's more of a music um and film and kind of IT space conference. And then we have the Austin City Limits Music Festival, which is like a big outdoor setup with lots of stages on in one of our big parks, the Silver Park. 
And so last this just this last year, Pink and Little Nans were here, and Billie Eilish was here last year, and Miley Cyrus. So, wow. so we, those are for like the big kind of big events, and those those bring in a lot of people for that that two week. I guess it's two weekends that they do that 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 music festival. Yeah, it sounds cool. Yeah. So that's kind of there's a lot the of stuff scene. going on yeah there's and there's artists there's artists that kind of have their uh, their work area is kind of in east austin so there's a lot of local artists as well that that do stuff like that so great great so i'm a foodie i love to eat mm -hmm. so what's the restaurant scene like in austin yeah so austin has some really good restaurants we are i mean we're known for Barbecue, let's say barbecue, Mexican food, and breakfast tacos. So <laughs> we're like one in the country. We're one of the those big headquarters for for barbecue, and even just south west, southeast of me, there's a city called Lockhart, and it is known as the barbecue capital of Texas. They have four or five kind of traditional barbecue restaurants that are just right there in downtown. And I actually went there with my friends last weekend to go to um, Black's Barbecue. And uh, so it's really, it's, it's just all around the corner. There's places all, everywhere in the town. There's trailer, the uh, trail, food trailers are really big here. Some places, I know some big cities now are getting a place called Torchy's Tacos. That used to be a little, little store here in Austin that was just making breakfast tacos and kind of tacos for lunch. And they started building trailers all over town. Wow. That's when I got to know them. But then I noticed like when I went to Denver in 2015 or something like that, there was there. tacos <laughs> opening. Ah. And my friend sent a picture from, he moved from Austin to St. Petersburg. And he saw a Torchy's Tacos in under Pete. construction in St. Pete. So, <laughs> so there's, yeah, there's a couple of Austin places that have grown. Hop Dottie's is another burger place that I think I've seen in like Denver. So there's... Lots of places like that. There, but there's also are they traditional restaurants? Well, yeah. There's well, there's also I would say also the kind of theme here is there's been more kind of nicer restaurants. So like we've had Top Chef. So some of the like chefs from like Top Chef have yeah. opened up their own restaurants in town. There's some like new. I've been to like recently in the last year like some new like Mediterranean restaurants, and usually it says well it's been opened by a chef from Boston or nice. or New York or something like that. Yeah. And so we have some more places like that that are a little more high end um, mm -hmm. coming in, and they're in these beautiful outdoor lots of rooftop bars and stuff like that are in town. So as long as the when those months when the weather is nice, you can right. sit outside. It's and, popular uh, either on a rooftop the, like the rooftop restaurant. Or a lot of places have patios. You can bring your dogs. Austin's very dog friendly, so people bring their dogs to all these places. So, but yeah, it's just a mix, and there's like a good mix, and like a lot of great like kind of traditional Mexican restaurants are all around town. But there is like a mix. We have some Asian food as well. Like there's like kind of an Asian folk area up north. There's a lot of like like Asian markets and the kind of traditional Chinese barbecue restaurants. And oh, I've never had Chinese barbecue. Yeah, that's like where you have like the roast duck or the like oh, barbecue okay. pork and things like that. And oh, that so sounds yummy. They're really good. They're worth the drive up. But yeah, I live absolutely. I live south, so we drive up north every once in a while. Go up there. So, Yum. Yeah, I'm coming down. <laughs> <laughs> How about Austin's public transportation? What's that like? Could you live in the downtown area and without a car, or do you need a car? I think you. You could, I guess you could, if you lived in downtown and you didn't have a car, you could get by kind of walking around and there, there is a major grocery downtown. There is like a lot of smaller groceries that you could go to. Um, and so, and, well, there, I guess if you live on the west side of downtown, there's actually, there's, I guess this has changed in the last couple of years. There's a whole, so there's a Whole Foods downtown on the west side and then they opened up, oh, and then Whole Foods opened up a second place on the east side. So you could probably get by with going there and there's a trader joe's downtown as well now so yeah maybe it's not as hard as it would have been before i guess the thing ago. is if you want to go to like some of that other stuff i was talking about or going out to the hill country or going to like some of the other like recreational areas you'll need yeah. a car to do that you could probably find a bus route that will go there but it's going to be pretty Tough. slow yeah yeah do they have do they have a light rail set up in austin at all there is one commuter rail. There's one commuter rail that kind of goes out to the suburbs, to the, the north, the northwest suburbs, Cedar Park and Leander are the big ones. And then, but that kind of just stops in downtown. It doesn't really go over all the way through downtown. There's... Is there a connection a, to the airport? Uh, there is not, but they just, it just got approved last year. So they are making investments in that. 
there's going to build they're going to build a light rail from downtown to the airport and then okay. they're going to build another line that's going to kind of go straight from like downtown south through down through the neighborhoods uh, kind of central neighborhoods and then up north and then they're actually going to build a whole underground tunnel similar to it reminds me of the one in seattle people have been to the light rail system in seattle there's that downtown i have transit kind of it's tunnel great where buses and the light rail can use that tunnel so the one i see in austin looks very similar they're gonna for like five or six blocks through downtown uh they're going to bury all the new light rail and the bus lines so so that'll be good. It just will probably, I think I saw like a project timeline was like 2029 or something when it will be first in operation on, according to their plan. So that would be a while before that happens. But we do have two rapid bus routes that go north-south on some of the major arterial like roads that aren't the highways. So those kind of connect through downtown and one of them goes by 4th Street where the bars are. So you could probably get by with that as well if you kind of found a place that's close to one of those rail lines. You can get into downtown and probably be okay with it with that but i think otherwise in general people kind of feel like they have to get you need a have, car. have a car and there's like <clears throat> a big cycling community here as well i know many of my coworkers who ride their bike avidly and i think they just they're okay with the hot weather in the summertime and we have like showers that a lot of offices have showers for bike commuters oh wow this, that's this interesting the city we have some of that stuff so but yeah if you live in those closer neighborhoods too i think you can get by doing that and like out where i live i'm kind of on the border of the kind of country roads and things like that and so we have a yeah, lot of definitely biker yeah well yeah I, we don't have any transit here and there's no buses that come through our neighborhood yet but we do have a lot of bike like the kind of uh, the long distance people biking for exercise and recreation well, i'll go out on the weekends to drive to wherever and i'll see these big groups of like 20 30 um bikers who are going down the country roads out here so that's big so i yeah. kind of pictured that their transportation system similar to or maybe even more than florida's because florida doesn't really have much he- yeah, I feel like it's kind of like a thing where like, we got like one rail, that one rail line was built in like the 2007, like 2007-ish or something like that. But it only went out, They it was on an existing rail line. They basically kind of tried to save some money. And so they built it on an existing like abandoned rail line that kind of cut out of downtown on the east side. And then it cuts up through some of the neighborhoods and then it skews to the west and goes up one of our parallels are one of our major highways out to the out to like at the time the major suburbs were cedar park and leander out there and so and that thing went, i guess before covid i remember like they were they had they were maxing out capacity on that rail line and even though it, it didn't connect to a lot in downtown it stops at like it's kind of stopped on the east side of downtown and then you had to get off and transfer to buses to get around the rest of downtown but they were uh, traffic i would say the other part of this conversation this topic is a uh, traffic and traffic in austin is pretty pretty bad heavy. for a medium-sized city it's very heavy yeah and i-35 through downtown was kind of i mean i know it got voted many times as like one of the worst one of the worst top or top 10 worst segments of highway in the state of texas in terms right. of traffic counts that the university uh, texas a&m university does analysis so that's it is a problem. So like, if you live out in the suburbs, I mean, for me, I live about 10 miles from downtown. And I mean, it takes me 15, 20 minutes, but I kind of pick the part of town that's not really developed yet. So traffic is relatively light for me to get downtown. And things have gotten back kind of after COVID. I feel like when I do have to drive during the day at kind of commute hours, it's still kind of like 20 minutes heavy to get downtown if you live in one of those places like san marcos i mean it's a 30 minute drive just without traffic to get to downtown it'd probably be like more like 50 minutes or something like that i guess with like actual traffic on like i-35 on the way in and like round rock or cedar park are the other kind of traditional suburbs they'd kind of probably be the same thing where it'd be like maybe i'm trying to think what the commutes are from there it'd probably be 30 minutes or Something Do you think like the that. rail that you have had spurred commerce and building in those areas? Yeah, they certainly did that. I know that they built that they re they rezoned the areas around the transit stops to be more multi-purpose and allow higher more more dense development. And so certainly some of those areas, actually the place where the Whole Foods on the east side of town, that's the first stop on the other side of the highway from downtown. And that's a whole big kind of a big kind of 
con uh, apartment complex and the Whole Foods, and there's a Target all right there next to downtown. And so that was like one of those where that area got rezoned. But all the other stops, I know I haven't been to like all of them, but I know that they certainly got rezoned to promote development. And some of them are kind of the suburban stops. But I think Leander also, like the city of Leander has blown up the last 10 years since they built that rail line. I think that may have been part of it as people felt like they could move all the way out to Leander. It's like mm -hmm. one of the furthest out suburbs and still be able to get into town. And I think also, I think the other part of it was like during COVID, <laughs> Leander blew up because people could live in Leander and not have to even think about right. having to commute if they have a job that lets them work from home. So How far is the airport from your place and how far is it from downtown? Yeah, so from downtown, it's probably about 15, 20 minutes. I think it's kind of the same for me. I live on that side of town. It's kind of on the southeast side of town. So That's pretty I'm good. only 15, 20 minutes away. But it all the, if you, uh, <laughs> I guess if you look at it, the runways only go like north south. So if you live on other each side of it, it's not so bad. <laughs> <laughs> so I live on the side of, of there. So I kind of hear them take off every once in a while, but it's usually not too bad. So. That's good as long as you can sleep. Yes. Oh, yeah. I grew up in Jacksonville, Florida. I live right next to a Navy, oh, okay. a Navy air base, so it's like kind of quaint. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I live right next to the light rail, in fact, right across the street. But they stop clanging, but it sounds like San Francisco streetcars from where I am. But you get used to it after a while. Yeah. How about, what's the crime like? Is there is there heavy crime or... It is, I would say, I mean, I kind of looked, I don't feel like it's any better or worse than any other cities. I kind of looked at, I did kind of look at, try and look up some numbers and it seemed like we were kind of in the average, like in the middle of the pack for U.S. cities for crime. Where I am, I'm in like a newer neighborhood and I feel, I feel fine out here. And are you gated? No, we are not gated. Okay. So yeah, I mean, I see some things on like some of the crime reporters. I see some stuff in some of the neighborhoods to the east of us. But nothing out of the ordinary yeah. and like mostly petty. Yeah. And I would say like crime. down. Yeah. And so like in downtown, like around the bars and stuff like that, I don't think there's a lot of crime. I guess the one part of downtown I've seen like more, there's been more stories about it is the, it's called East. Well, it's called Sixth Street. I guess the main drag of Sixth Street in downtown is where traditionally this part of downtown where they close it off. And that's like when there's a big UT game, like everybody goes. and That's where all the big bar scene is I mean, many bar neighborhoods in Austin, but Sixth Street is like the main one. And that one is where they've had a lot of stories of people getting shot in the street, like when they kind of close down the streets to all the traffic on the weekends, and then there'll be these events there. So that's the ones where I've seen some of that stuff. And it it's changed. I don't know, it's different these days than it was when I moved here. So I and the gay bars are sort of on the other side of downtown from there. And I always feel fine over there. I was going to say, um, as a gay man, do you feel safe walking around the yeah, downtown I do. Or the area? Yeah, I do. I mean, I think I've heard of one or two Hate gay crimes. bashings that have happened in Austin. It's been a long time since I remember hearing some one of those on the, like the news. So those are kind of rare for the city. So I don't think it's a it's so sad issue. that we have to even think about it. It's just one yeah. of those things. So if I if I lived in Austin and I wanted to walk my doggy at two in the morning outside of my house, <laughs> would I feel safe? I would say for most neighborhoods, yeah. I mean, I guess there's some neighborhoods that yeah that you, you wouldn't may not go want into. to, but but otherwise, yeah. I mean, I think like downtown, even I know I'm downtown at two two a.m. You know, just downtown kind of dies down a little bit. I mean, I think. Even when you're downtown, if there is like somebody, like someone experiencing homelessness talking to you or something like that, they're really just, they will ask casually for some money and they're usually not violent. violent or in your face or anything like that. So how about the homeless population? What's that like? Yeah. Is, is it like, is it comparable to other big cities I, or like Seattle or? Uh, yeah. I mean, I always Portland. feel like it was, it was, it's probably like something like maybe I always thought it was like a little lower or something like in Seattle or Portland. Yeah, they're pretty high. Um, but what's happened recently, I guess that's another thing in the news, was like I think in 2019, the city decided to decriminalize sleeping on the sleeping in public areas. And so it was something like that where you could come out. A lot of people were they were living in creek area, low laying areas near creeks or out in some wood, wooded areas. And so they kind of were able to come out and like live on the sidewalks and tents and things like that. And so it was a 
bit of contention when that happened. And then what happened was the city, well, there was a petition from by citizens to ask for a, an item to be added to the ballot to vote on whether or not the city should re-criminalize that. And it won by like, I think 60, 70%. So there's a lot of people who live downtown and there's a, there were parts of town, like they were all living also underneath the major highways, the kind of underpasses of the highways for shade. Yeah. And so those neighborhoods are also these kind of like more affluent, close in neighborhoods and things like that. So that, that passed. And then it kind of went back to, to, I guess the way it was before. So it feels more like the, it's the same. There's, there are people downtown asking for money on the street, but not really getting very aggressive. And then, but yeah, I'm assuming that they have, I mean, there, there are homeless community centers to, to help with that. But I think a lot of them have probably moved, had to move back into the wooded areas where they were before. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. As long as your governor doesn't ship them all elsewhere. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> we won't go into that. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Tell us about healthcare. What's the healthcare like in Austin? Is do you have good hospitals? Good, the right amount of physicians to the population? Are there long waits? What's the story? No, I think it's pretty good here. We have a couple of we have a couple hospital brand brands or companies. So St. David's and Seton and Scott and White are the, like, the three big ones. So, so we definitely have like hospitals are kind of spread out in terms of having something close by if you have an issue. And we have a pretty good coverage of medical day to day kind of medical needs, regional clinics, and like the couple of regional clinics who have if you need help with HIV or Trivada or PrEP and those kind of things. I'm able to get that at, at those places. And we have a, a kind. There's a place called the Kind Clinic. It's a kind of a uh, focused on HIV assistance with medical care, PrEP, those things like that. And it's kind of a Texas nonprofit. And so they've got a couple locations in Austin. They've got one okay. in Dallas and San Antonio. So that's where I go. So, so yeah, it feels pretty well. I mean, I would say if you need something really special, specialty, specialty care, right. Houston is the leading, like has all the kind of leading medical yeah. research centers. So yeah. bleeding edge kind of stuff. So they're kind of probably at the top of the tier of, known for medical care, but Austin has got pretty good coverage. Yeah. Great. Great. What do you wish that was in Austin that you may not have that you may have had elsewhere in Florida or? Yeah. Well, I would say probably for me coming, yes, coming from Florida, beaches are certainly what I miss. I mean, I I didn't go there all the time, but uh, Austin being landlocked, it can be a little tough to find find something like that. We do have a Lake Travis out west. I would say there is a gay hangout area there, a place called Hippie Hollow. It is Texas's only nude beach. Well, it's on the side of a lake hill, so okay. it's not like a sandy beach or anything. But you, we go out. You can go out there. The gays kind of have a certain area that they always go to. And yeah, they usually put the gays. In yes, the we're off on the side. Yeah, and so and then <laughs> people who have boats. So so. But the lake here is pretty big, so there a lot of people who have like nice homes out there. You can like kind of store your boat out there. So a lot of folks who have boats, they'll bring all their boats over to that area, and they'll kind of line them all up and and dock, and then so then all the people on the rocks can hang out and then you jump in the water and you can hang out with your friends who have a boat and then there's like two there's big parties out there uh, twice a year kind of the beginning in the summer they have a big big party called splash out there yeah, so sounds nice so you can get that but i would say in terms of stuff i do miss having like kind of really nice beautiful beaches like what we had in florida it's about a 10 yeah. hour drive to pensacola to get to something like that but yeah i think that's the only thing that i could think of from somewhere i li- only lived in florida before this so oh okay thing. so you only have that <laughs> and my, my public's fried chicken that is, my uh, friends are joke every time i come Publix, home. i love Publix. <laughs> i miss Publix actually Publix and their deli and stuff like yeah, that yeah so. they had a really good deli yeah. And here in Austin, we have HEBs, the kind of, I guess, the kind of bread and butter yeah. grocery store. There's others, but they're the one that I think of as the kind of Publix. Publix made awesome comments. subs. Yeah. Yeah. They did. Yeah. But Austin's got, I mean, HEB's got great, all their kind of local stuff and kind of Texas branded stuff is really good too. So, what would you say are the cons of living in Austin? Definitely, I think the heat in the summertime can certainly get to you. Some people love it 
uh, here, and it's not really a problem for them. For me, I'm pretty like kind of fair skin, so it kind of gets to me and looking for a break in the middle of the summertime. The home prices are certainly becoming an issue. It was not like I think maybe like before COVID, it was like maybe the average home price was like 400 and not 550. 550, and it jumped to like six something like over the summertime. So yeah, it's like if you sell, where do you go? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so some people go to San Antonio, Dallas, and Houston do have like cheaper price for if, and if you're fine with a city like that, then, um, be good. I know people who came to Austin and just cause of the hype. And then they looked at a prices here for homes and then they looked at Dallas, this bigger city or Houston, this bigger mm-hmm. city. And why, why is Austin cost more? It's supposed to be this kind of smaller city. So if that's something you value, all the kind of bigger amenities or like more airport connections that you'll get in right. Dallas or Houston, the balance of cost may, may not work for you. But if you like a smaller city and you like all this kind of hip stuff that's going on in Austin all the time, right. then, then you get what you pay for, for you. Yeah. And I would say, uh, travel to, I guess, talking about travel, the airport is, is, it's small. I mean, I think it's small for how big the city's gotten. So they've, they're trying to catch up, but there are like a lot of times, like a lot of problems with like security lines at the airport oh, yeah. recently as things have opened back up. And then, and we have like international connections. Sometimes I think some people move from California or, and they see like how we only have like three European connections. And like, but we have, we do have, Three, we have a flight to London and Amsterdam and Frankfurt. And then we were going to get one right to Paris right before COVID. And that all went away. And then they haven't brought that back. But we have direct flights to Cancun and Puerto Vallarta now. Oh, wow. Um, so there's only like two, it's like two, three hour flight to those. I mean, Cabo and they've really expanded this last year. Like American Airlines has added yeah, like 20, 20 new cities and things like that. So we have, we're really well connected and it's only three hours to one coast and three hours to the other. So it's a, I've heard that from a friend who moved from New York that he really, he didn't really get it like the value of like living in Austin until he could like fly to the West coast. He never went to the West coast because it was a six hour, seven hour <laughs> flight. Right. And so now he can go visit all those places and it's, it's more yeah, that's definitely yeah. good. Yeah, it's important to have those connections in the airport. Yeah. And I say the other thing is just the, I guess, out of the con can be sort of the political climate for, it just depends on what your take is on it. Right. But a climate, the political climate for like the rest of the Texas. And so, I mean, when you're in Austin, I don't really feel it at all. It's only kind of when I watch the news or right, it's your bubble. What, what the state's going on that things can happen. So, and they have the ability to kind of like over overwrite things that the cities do. So that's a trend. So I would say if people are wanting to move here and you're kind of concerned about that, I mean, actually the Texas session is about to legislative session is about to fire up in January. So I'm wondering what will be sort of in store, but they have the ability to kind of, as the progressive cities make policies, the state will come around every two years when they have their legislative session and kind of overrule things. Yeah. So it just kind of depends on what's on the chopping block there. But otherwise, the city of Austin does a great job of providing great things for the gay community. Like we have non-discrimination employment policies that the city has for at least like within the city proper. Very important. And we have for, I'm trying to think of the new things they've added. So we have, we we've, even when I've, first started with the city we had trans well we had d- domestic partner stuff for like right. every benefit they could provide it for and then they added in 2016 they added coverage for transgender surgery up oh, to seventy five thousand one one time kind of available to employees so that is available and we have months of maternity and paternity leave so if you have a child or adopt a child both the both parents are allowed to have three months paid leave so so the city. I'm, I'm of, sure okay. they're a hundred. They score a hundred on HRC. Yes, they do. Yeah, yeah. That's so, a, so that's that like pretty much says so it's it like you're in the bubble. Yes, it's good. I don't know that I have faced any other. I don't feel like I've faced direct discrimination in other places in the state, but I'm usually going to Dallas and Houston and San Antonio downtown area. So, right. Yeah. In wrapping up, Andrew, what would you say to our audience if they're thinking of relocating to Austin? Yeah, I would say you you do have to kind of come here and get the vibe for it. I feel like sometimes people feel like all the hype they read when they come here, it's overrated. And they don't get why Austin gets all these high marks. 
And other people come here and they just love the chill vibe and how friendly everybody is and the kind of Southern hospitality. And I kind of live in the city that's like a slower pace than maybe the bigger cities like California and New York. Still have lots going on in downtown and things to go to and all this kind of beautiful nature areas or going out to the hill country and going to like wineries. I mean, they're not Napa wineries, but like they're, it's really a beautiful area out there and this kind of side bucolic life lifestyle. So I think that's the part of it is you just have to kind of experience it and either come for one of the big events South by or ACL, or there's always like just different festivals going on around town throughout the year. So there's that. And then it's just, yeah, just kind of following that. I think people kind of get concerned about the political climate for the state. So I think you just have to kind of follow that and then, but then look at what the cities are doing as well. Right. So you I have to look at that right. everywhere. Yeah. It's the same pretty much everywhere. So yeah, it's important. Yeah. I just think the states, yeah, the states are going to become a little more important with, the, with, I guess with what's happened with the Supreme court stuff, you yeah. know, the, if other things get knocked down, then it's going to kind of be up to what the states have or what your local governments right are doing. exactly. So those are going to become more important in the future. So yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, Austin is definitely on my bucket list, and I know where to find you. <laughs> All right. Thank so you. thank you so much for this podcast and and the great chat that we had. Really appreciate it. Thanks so much. You're welcome. Take care now. Bye bye. Thank you for listening to the Where Do Gays Retire podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, please subscribe to our podcast and consider making a donation by clicking the coffee cup on any page at www.wheredogaysretire.com. Each cup of coffee that you buy costs $5 and goes towards helping us continue the podcast. Thank you for your continued support.